morning. Let's begin. Page 317. 317. Joy to the world. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 317. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart repair big and rude. And earth and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. This is our fellowship song. Page 317 on the second. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs and fly. Buffaloes and floods, rocks, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. Repeat, repeat the sound. How many of you are ready for Christmas? How many of you have had a Christmas cookie? How many of you want more? Me? Okay. We're going to pray. Would you pray? Bow your head, close your eyes, and pray with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for making yourself available. Thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. Thank you for giving us eternal life through Jesus Christ dying on the cross and raising from the dead. Thank you that we can know him and love him, trust him, be like him, follow him, think like him. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us this very day. Be with those who aren't up to being here. They don't feel well. They're still hurting or maybe now they feel like they have a cold or something. Just be with them. Lord, I pray. Uh, Carol gave me a note about Lynn Ross. She has an infection. Lord, just be with her and, and work in her body. You can. You made us. You know what to do. So we ask you to do in her what you can do. Father, you have a reason. You have a plan. We don't always understand it, but you, we know you love us, and we know that everything you do, you said we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So we want to love you, God, and trust you and serve you. Thank you for this day. I pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You heard that. Amen. You may be seated. Page 308 in your hymnals, The First Noel, page 308. The First Noel, the angel did say, was to 
the table in the back these nice little flyers for the Christmas cantata there aren't many if you think you could give don't take them all or don't take a stack we don't have enough commit to like one give it to someone that you think might come if they got a personal special invitation that's what these are about these aren't about throwing them in your car, and then after Christmas, you've got them all. It's about taking one and saying, I'm going to make sure I invite someone. Amen. Got that? It's the 18th. We're calling it the Lakeside Baptist Church Choir event. Cantata. Cantata. <laughs> Ta-da. So if you would commit to that, do that in your bulletin. In your bulletin, you're having practice at 430. Yeah. Evening service at 6. On the backside, several things. On Monday, that's tomorrow, the ladies are meeting at Lynn Pendles. If you have questions, see somebody. 630, Wednesday, Awana, teens, adults. Thursday, the ladies are going to Chicago. Pray that it's cold. It will be. Pray that it's really cold. Christmas store, Awana, on your bulletin, you're looking the green box. Christmas store, we need new or gently used men's gifts for the kids. They come and shop for their parents. We have enough for the women. We need it. Uh, gifts for the men. Teen Afterglow on the 11th, the 18th. That is two weeks from tonight. Our Christmas party in the evening. Of course, the katata is during the morning service. But in the evening, we're having our Christmas party Bring whatever kind of food you want. If you want to bring a pack of cookies, bring a pack of cookies. If you want to slave over a stove all week, slave over a stove all week. Just bring whatever you want to bring. On Christmas, we are having one service, 1030 in the morning, no Sunday school, no evening. I know, I know, I know. And then the 28th. The Ladies Seminar, Prairie Baptist, you can see my wife if you have questions about that. Many, many people, I, I'm shocked, I'm humbled that so many people are upset that we didn't record Wednesday night. I only know one cure for that, be here. And equipment fails, people don't fail. We try. Right? We, I mean, thank God for these guys. We've got a good record. All through, I mean, we've been doing this for so long, and I'm thankful that it's available, but I, I'm sorry that, you know, you didn't, it was nothing. It was, it, it was, I'm glad. God had a reason he didn't, because that was a bad, they're all bad. That one was really bad on Wednesday night, and we're just thankful that, <laughs> what do you want me to say, man, was it good? I. I had to be here. I didn't want to be here. My wife made me come. I, I thought it was good. I thought it was good service. So, but I think that about all of them. Ushers, come. Glad you're here. We're, we're, we're trying to uh, 
meet as many needs as we can. We're trying to get you all nourished, spiritually nourished, physically nourished. We're trying to, uh, how many of you want to enjoy living for the Lord? You don't want to be a burden like, oh, well, if I want to be, I get to live for the Lord. I get, I get to serve God. I get to talk to God. I, I get to know him. Right? I don't want to be a weariness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this is all of our money is your money. You've blessed us and we thank you for that. May we be faithful to you. May we give and bring in what belongs to you. Lord, I pray that our lives would be lived by faith. So often we just live by what we can do. We want to live by faith. We want to walk by faith. Lord, thank you for how you take care of us. And so we are asking you now that we would give like we're giving to you. Not giving to the church. We are, but we're giving in the church, through the church, at the church, to you. I want it to be as if you were sitting here. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Page 304 in your hymnals. Away in a manger, page 304. Let's all stand, shall we? On the first verse, Junior Church, you may be dismissed. Abby, Sarah, and Rainey are coming to sing. Let's adore him, shall we? Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we want to make this service a worship service of you. As best we can, we want it to be all about you. Often we come because we have needs. And too often we're thinking about what you can do for us. May today we adore you. What can we do for God? How can I live for him? 
How can I honor him? How can I worship him? Help us with that today. There's so many things that go on in our mind. There's a lot of distractions. Help us to be, as you called it, single-eyed. You said if our eye is single, our whole body will be full of light. I pray that will be true. It's the Christmas season. There's so many things happening, good and bad. And how often you must be cheated in getting our full adoration. May this service today help us to adore you. May the service today be all that you want it to be. And I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jonah chapter 4. I tried to do a Christmas message and I couldn't do it. Jonah chapter 4. Don't read anything yet, please. I want to bring you up to where we're going. That's what I'm supposed to do. Jonah, find the fourth chapter. The story which is very familiar to all of us is that God wanted the people of Nineveh to hear the truth, the gospel. So he tells Jonah to go to Nineveh. Jonah, because he could, decides that he would not go. Did you ever do that? Did you ever know that the Lord wanted you to do something and you didn't do it? And you knew? You think Jonah knew he was on that ship? You think Jonah woke up after they woke him up? You think Jonah said, where am I? Boy, I must have slipped off in unconsciousness. He knew exactly what he was supposed to do. Amen? But he wanted everybody to think. His way. So the ship that he's on, that he finds going away from where he was supposed to be, got in trouble. I do not do ships well. I don't do little ships well. In fact, I don't do back seats well. If you're driving and I'm in the back seat, I'm seasick. I just am. So they are going through quite the struggle on this boat. In fact, the very reason for the voyage was thrown overboard just to try to save them. Finally, they find Jonah. He's sleeping. What do you think you're doing? Call on your God. Then Jonah fesses up. He said, this whole, this whole storm is because of me. Remember that? Jonah chapter 1. We're not going to read that, but you, you remember that. They said, why have you done this? Lost, heathen, heathen sailors ask him, Why would you do? Why would you not do? How many of you know lost people that have character? I'm not talking about people, some that don't. We know there are some that don't. I know a lot of Christians that don't have character. Sorry. Say, am I one of them? See me after, I'll tell you. It's possible to not have God and have character. 
they can't understand why Jonah would not do what God told him to do. Jonah's solution is not get right with God. Jonah's solution is that they throw him overboard, get him out of the ship, and then God would spare them in the ship because it was all Jonah's fault. So they said, we can't throw you overboard. I mean, am I missing something here? Would you just say this is my fault? Seemed like this would be a good time to get right with God. What does Jonah say? Now look at me, because you're going to be like looking in a mirror. All Jonah had to do was get right with God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Throw me overboard. They said, no. Maybe, we don't know, maybe they rode so that Joseph, Jonah, Joseph, who are we talking about? Maybe they rode so that Jonah would get right with God. Maybe they thought, man, this guy, if he isn't doing what God wants him to do, maybe while we're rowing and, and the boat is rocking, maybe he'll go, okay, okay. But you and I know he didn't. So they throw him overboard. Jonah's not praying now saying, I hope there's a whale out there. I hope there's a stray piece of board that I can hang on. Jonah's just expecting, listen to me, Jonah's expecting to die. Whoever saw this twist, that this giant, even if it isn't giant, think what you want. He got swallowed. It was an eel, a goldfish, a frog. He got swallowed. He's in the belly of this fish, three days and three nights, Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2, verse 1, starts out by saying, then he prayed. He seems in this chapter, Jonah chapter 2, to be thankful. The fish takes him back to shore. Hockers him up. That's in the Hebrew. Hockers him up on shore. Chapter 3, he goes into Nineveh. In my, in my Christian life, there are three top chapters in the Bible. Out of all the chapters in the Bible, three stand out. Jonah chapter 3 is one of them. He walks through town, speaks less than a dozen words, and the whole town turns to God. The whole town. you ever have someone in your life that you prayed for that got saved? It's pretty good, isn't it? Remember when your kids got saved? Remember when you prayed with them, if you prayed with them? Remember when those you love and your family came to you maybe and told you, hey, just want to let you know I got saved. I know I'm going to heaven. Remember what that did to you? Jonah was supposed to go, didn't go. He gets swallowed by a whale. He gets spewed out. He goes into Nineveh finally. The whole town, the whole entire thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people get saved. They're born again. They, they get right with God. Two verses in chapter 4 tell the whole story. And Jonah is the author of the book. But it shows me that God told them what to write. Because I would have been talking about chapter 3 and chapter 4. What a great message. You would not believe what happened after I preached this message. 
but we know that God is in control of the authorship of the book because he records truthfully. Look at verse 4 and verse 9. Verse 4, then the Lord said, or said the Lord, doest thou well to be angry? Look at me, look at me. God's asking Jonah, how's this all working out for you? In other words, this is what you want to do. It's not well. Then notice verse 9. God said to Jonah, do it's not well to be angry for the gourd. And he said, Jonah responds, this is crazy. Jonah responds, I do well to be angry. And he states, even unto death. In other words, look at me, look at me. I'll never change. That is a sad state to be in. Heavenly Father, every one of us in this room, everyone that's hearing this message needs to be soft. If Jonah was soft, he would have went to Nineveh the first time. You didn't try to kill him in chapter 1. You tried to get his attention. And you got his attention in chapter 2. In chapter 3, you showed him it wasn't him. It was you. And you were worth serving and following. And in chapter 4, he just wants to be angry. And he'll be angry till he dies. How sad. That is just such a sad statement. He'd rather die. Oh, God, I don't know how everybody's feeling today, but I know that you need to work in us. I don't know if we're doing well. And even though you knew exactly how Jonah was doing, you asked him that that very examining, investigative question. Doest thou well? He wouldn't say no. He was just a mess. What a mess. What a mess of a man. What a mess of a life. God, speak to us today. I plead with you. Speak to me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What an attitude. The Bible says be angry and sin not. The Bible doesn't say don't ever get angry. Just do it, but don't let it get you. What, what a mess. I mean, there's nothing good about Jonah. Chapter 3, he does what the Lord wants him to do, but even then, he's got just such a horrible attitude. In fact, it's not there. I'm going to read into it. I'm not going to change the scripture. But I'm going to assume that God was sick by how Jonah was acting. And that's, that's what God is saying there. Doest thou well? You saw in verse 4 and verse 9. Doest thou well? In other words, are you well? Because you don't sound well. You don't look well. In fact, I, I think it's okay. Maybe it's just preaching. If it's just preaching, give me that. But I think God is saying, I don't know how you're doing, but you're making me sick. You say, you have scripture for that? I'm glad you asked. There's a church in the book of Revelation that God said of them, you're not hot. You're not cold. You're lukewarm. And he said, I just as soon, you know it, don't you? I just as soon spit you out of my mouth. In other words, you make me sick. 
when God called Jonah to go to Nineveh to tell them to repent, God saw the wickedness in Nineveh. And God knew the power of his message. And God, in all his patience, you don't tell God, you don't tell God, you don't tell God who made you that you'd rather be dead because he can make you dead. I mean, that's just, God can. If Jonah was supposed to die in chapter 1, I'm sure God could have arranged that. If Jonah was supposed to die in chapter 2, if all that whale did was swallow, it's over. No book of Jonah. The book of Jonah would be one chapter. He's supposed to go to Nineveh. He didn't. Now he's dead. But he did go. Maybe he was angry when he went. Doest thou well? God asked him twice. Doest thou well? And if we put it in our vernacular, it would be, what in the world are you mad about? Remember me? God is saying, remember me? When the ship was rocking? Remember when they threw you I was trying to get you. Remember me? Remember I tried to get your attention? Remember they threw you overboard? Remember me, the guy who made the whale that swallowed you? Remember me, the one that you said salvation belongs to me, the one you're thankful for? The one, the, I'm the one who ta- had the whale spew you on shore. Remember me? What are you mad about? I don't have any statements. I have some questions. Number one, why would Jonah run from God? Why would any Christian run from God? He's the Savior. Why would you run away from the Savior? If he's the only one that can save you, neither is there salvation in any other. Why would you run away from the Savior? Because you think you're bigger. That's why. Would he just keep running the rest of his life? I mean, how does that work? I don't know. I've run from God, but I always come back. Did he really think God didn't know about it? Did he really think he's in that ship and he's sleeping? Did he really think? That he was getting away with something? Maybe he just expected God to forgive him. When God said, you shouldn't have done that. Jonah knew enough to know, right? Because he says in chapter 4, look at verse 2. I knew that thou art a gracious God merciful, slow to anger, of great kindness, and repentance to the yeah, I don't. I, I just figured I could do what I want. You should never run from God. Hello? You should never run from God. Nineveh was a brutal and a cruel city. He knew that they would possibly mock him. He knew that they would ridicule him. They'd treat him as a fool. It was a heathen city. He thought he would die there. So in chapter 4, he's waiting to see what happens to the city. What do you mean what happened? It already happened. Isn't that amazing that God has already worked? Have you read chapter 3 before? The whole town repented, turned to God. Chapter 4, Jonah's waiting for something. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? God's already worked. Hey, God's already saved you. Why would you run from him? Why wouldn't you run to him? 
when you're in trouble? Why would you run away like you're mad at God? Let me tell you something. It doesn't bother, bother God when you're mad at him. He can handle it. But you ought to be running to him. It's easy for us to talk about Jonah's disobedience. How he did what he did. How his attitude was so terrible. And the same God that died for Jonah died for you. How could we refuse to do what he tells us to do and run away? I don't know. It happens. I don't know how, but it happens. Second question I have. Why would he rather die? Notice what he says in, he says in verse 3. He says, therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And then, of course, the Lord says in verse 4, doest thou well? I mean, how does Jonah say, nuh-uh? I'm doing terrible, Lord, you know it. It's interesting, isn't it? God told the devil that there was one man who was the greatest man in the whole world. His name was Job. Job goes through a little trouble, and Job makes a statement, I wish I was never born. It can happen to all of us. Elijah challenges the prophets of Baal to a showdown on Mount Carmel. He prays, and God answers, and fire eats rocks and water. Elijah looks at the prophets of Baal and he says, now y'all are going to die. And he kills them all. The king's wife, Jezebel, hears about it. She sends word that just what he did to them, she would do to him. Wouldn't you knock at her door and go, I'm not scared of you. I mean, she wasn't on Mount Carmel. Elijah saw fire come down. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but usually water puts out fire. Fire doesn't eat water. And I'm pretty sure stones don't burn up, but on Mount Carmel, they burned up. Why? Because it was fire from heaven. So now the king's wife threads him. Not the king, the king's wife. He runs and he says this, I wish I was dead. Do you hear God saying to Jonah, do it thou well? How you doing, Jonah? How's this anger working out for you? Remember Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 that uh, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. He wanted to go to heaven. He knew it was a gain, but he knew he needed to be here. I'm amazed. I'm sorry. I'm amazed at how Christians can block out God's voice. I'm amazed how they can be so selfish and so self-centered that they would just as soon die than do what God wants them to do. If God could help Job to be the greatest Christian on earth, he could help him through his trials. If God could get Elijah through a battle on Mount Carmel and rain down fire from heaven, then he could take care of the king's wife. And if God can take you out of hell and seat you in the heavenlies, he can get you through anything you're going through. Don't sleep spiritually. Number three, my third question is, why die when you could just run away again? If you ran away once, why wouldn't you run away again? You ever done that? Some of y'all 
And those, there's some that will be back. They leave here. They get mad at me. And if I came here, I'd get mad at me too. If I was a member of this church and I was a pastor, I wouldn't be here. Keep up. Then they always come back. They run away, come back, run away, come back. Thank God they come back. You and I know when we disobey, we know it's wrong. Jonah's mad, you get mad, I get mad, we get mad at God, we get mad at other Christians, we get mad at the church, we get mad at the preacher. James 1.20 says, The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. In other words, there's nothing good about getting mad. It just hurts you. I'm mad. Get over it. Don't take God for granted. He died for all your sins. But he cares for every sin that you commit. He cares about that. He cares about every time you walk away from him. Number four, why wouldn't he repent? I mean, he, he, he knew the drill. He walks through Nineveh, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. In other words, God's going to destroy this place if you don't get right with God. He knew what to do. Hello? Isn't it funny how we always know what to do? I mean, really. Let, let me just lay it out there for you. God isn't going to bypass who he is because you need help. If you're not right with God, God isn't going to just neglect who he is or what he expects from you and help you because you're, you're being lazy. Here's what I mean. You ought to read your Bible. You ought to be studying your Bible. You ought to be praying. Well, nobody prays like they should. Yeah, but you can pray. Quit excusing yourself. You ought to be praying. You ought to be reading your Bible. You ought to be tithing. Everything God's given you is his. Don't, don't, oh, I need God to help me. If you're cheating God, robbing God, I mean, you come to me and you want, you want magic wisdom so that God will quit being God and overlook what you, watch, 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 what you know you should be doing. All the time they say to me, I know I should be tithing, I know I should be, I know, I know, I, I know I should be reading the Bible, I know I should be praying. Well, you think God's going to go, okay, I'll quit being God for a while, because you're extra special to me. I'm sorry, you or me, that's not the way this goes. God left you here for a reason, and it wasn't for you. And if you're not telling people about Christ, God isn't just going to overlook the fact that you're not doing what he left you here to do? Because he knows if he just keeps giving you stuff and you're not doing what he wants you to do, you're not going to do it. Jonah said, hey, I'm, I'm angry and I'll die this way. We, we can't have that spirit. We need to have a spirit of repentance. We're all, look at me, look at me, look at me. We're all wrong. We don't live right. But don't expect God to be God if you're not going to be what God wants you to be. I want God to overlook who he is for a minute because I really need him. Look, let, let, let me help. Look, let me help you. Five things. Read your Bible. Pray. Tithe. Go to church. I knew that was coming. Yeah, it just started. You know why we have church? Because God's worth it.
You say, but my schedule. Then your schedule's too busy. Don't ask for God's help if you want him to bypass one of these things that he's asked you to do. There are five simple basic things. Read your Bible, pray, go to church, tithe, and tell others about him. It really is simple. But like Jonah, I know, I know. We need to do what we know we're supposed to be doing. You ought to be happy. You don't get what you deserve. I mean, Jonah could be in hell. Have you ever been so mad that you said life isn't fair? God's bigger than your life. Pray. Read the Bible. Go to church. Tithe. Tell others. When you're doing those things, now you can come to God and go, God, I'm doing what you want me to do. I mean, I think you're safe. You tell the Lord, I said, I think those five things are safe. And you can trust me, I'm the preacher. Judgment is coming to our world. It's time, it's time to tell people to turn to God. Time to have a good attitude about it. Well, I, I, you know, I, I, you know. When you say you know, that means you know, but you don't want to do it. That's what I've learned. In 40 years, I've learned that when somebody says, I know, that doesn't mean they know. That means they know, but they don't want to. We, we need to change that attitude. Is God saying to you, doest thou well? You're doing well. You're doing well. Isn't it amazing? I expect Jonah to be upset if God destroyed Nineveh. I mean, I would say, wait, I preach. You spared me. I go to the city. I preach the gospel. They turn to you and you destroy them. How could you do that? Isn't it crazy? I mean, God, God's using the ridiculous to get our attention. God saves the whole town and Jonah's teed off? What a jerk. I mean, what a jerk. Did he do what God wanted him to do? Yeah, but he had a terrible attitude. If you and I will follow the basics, God doesn't owe you. Listen to me. God doesn't owe you. But God will bless you. Blessed is the man that walketh not. There, there are definite steps to being blessed. But you can't walk in the counsel of the ungodly and then say, God, I need you to quit being God for a minute. Jonah said, I've just had it with all this. I don't like it. It stinks. I don't get it. I'd rather die. I'd rather run. I mean, he didn't know what was going on. He was so, he's so confusing. We ought to be rejoicing what God's done for us. We ought to re be rejoicing that God would save us. I should be in hell. God saved me. So I just got to keep up. Read his word. Talk to him, tell other people, come to his house, give him his tithe. And if I do those things, I've just made it easier for God to bless me. You imagine bargaining with God? Look, I know I'm not reading the Bible like I should. You think God's going to go, okay, but don't tell anybody. God's always going to be God. Jonah's message in Nineveh, Nineveh was yet 40 days. And Nineveh will be overthrown. In other words, God will come down on you. Do you believe that? You and I, you and I need to serve God and love him. 
realize what he's done for us. Your head is bowed. Your eyes are closed. Lord Jesus, there might be someone here that you're asking that ridiculous question to. You're angry. You've got a bad attitude. You're not doing what I want. How you doing? How you doing? You're doing well. You're doing well. I mean, I think that was a sarcastic question, and I admire Jonah for putting it in there. Do it so well to be angry? That, that's crazy. That, that question doesn't make sense. Because it's ridiculous. You're ridiculing his life. And God, I pray that we'll see that and change. That we'll, we'll run from that attitude and repent. I pray that today we would say, I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to do it with the right spirit. And I want to have the right spirit. And if I can't have that right spirit, God can give me that right spirit. So I'm going to trust God to give me the right spirit. Lord, speak to us. Help us to read our Bible. Help us to pray. Help us to tell other people the good news. Help us to be faithful to your house. Help us to tithe. And we believe if we do those things, if we follow you, if we love you like we should, then we're going to be blessed. We want you to change your ways for us. Jonah is saying, you know what? You're this way and I knew it. I was hoping you'd change. And you were saying to him, God, you said, do it so well to be angry. You were saying to him, oh, yeah, I didn't change. You're a mess. You're angry. How's that going for you? And he was so stubborn. He said, I'd just soon die. God, I don't want to live for you thinking I just want to die. Because he didn't want to die and be with you. He just wanted uh, what he was going through to be over with. He should have repented. He should have run to you and said, God, help me. Help me with my attitude. Help me with my anger. Help me to get through this. Help me to see this right. Help me to know what's going on here and to trust you. Help me to follow you. Help me to praise you through this. He missed it. He missed it. His, his stinking attitude kept him from the blessings that, that the whole city of Nineveh was going through. They were so ready to follow God. And he was such of a terrible example. God, speak to us. Don't let us think that we'll be okay because we can do whatever we want. We can do whatever we want. Jonah could run from you. He could have a horrible attitude. He could be angry. He could run away again if he wanted. But he could also repent. Help us to choose repentance. Help us to choose from what we know we shouldn't do to choose to do what we know you want us to do. If there's someone here that's not sure of heaven, if someone's here and they don't know that they're going to heaven when they die, may they see that. If someone's watching today and they do not know they'll be in heaven when they die, Lord, may you show them all they have to do is call out. They just have to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know I can't get to heaven without you. I'm trusting Jesus to be my Savior. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. I'm asking him to save me. There's a bunch of Christians in this room, a bunch of Christians watching that need to say, Lord, I know what I'm doing is wrong. I know what I'm thinking is wrong. I know how I'm feeling is wrong. I'm going to turn from it and turn to you. I believe that you can help me have the right attitude. I believe that you can help me with my anger. I believe you can help me with my lust. I believe you can help me with my bitterness. I believe you can help me with my jealousy. I believe you can help me with my temptations. I believe you can help me with my, my whatever it is, Lord. Help them to fill in the blank. You can help us if we come to you.
not go on the side of a hill. Wait to see what we want to happen, happen. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Are you listening to God? Your head bowed, your eyes closed. There's something I need to get. It might be little. Don't worry about the size of it. Worry about it. Take care of it today, whatever it is. Preacher, God is speaking to my heart. My head's bowed and my eyes are closed. God's speaking to my heart today. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Raise them high. Raise them high. This is about you. This is about you saying, I need to take care of this. Preacher, there's something in my life I need to get right with God. There's something in my life I'm running from. I need to run to God. I've been running from him. I'm angry about it. I'm upset. I don't get it. I'm confused. It'd be easier to die. No, it wouldn't. You're here for a reason. It's appointed unto man once to die. You don't make that appointment. God makes that appointment. You do what God wants you to do while you're here. Do it with the right attitude. Read your Bible. Pray. Tell others. Go to church. Tithe. God, let God will worry about everything else. You just do what he wants you to do. Preacher, I, God's speaking to me. Here's my hand. I need to take care of of this before today before today i want to take care of it today up and down up and down preacher there's something in my heart something in my life something i see something i see heavenly father please work in our hearts work in our hearts help us to realize how important these things are to you lost people being saved you knew that's why jesus was coming to die and jonah treated it like well you said he treated the gourd better than he treated those people. A plant that could die, that you brought and killed. You said, why would you have pity on the gourd? Oh, God, that's us. Sometimes our affections, our desires are so messed up. Help us, Lord. Help us. Speak to us. In this invitation, God, just press on us. Holy Spirit of God, convict us, I pray. In Jesus' name, piano's playing. You're standing. As you stand, as you stand, as you stand, you ought to tell your feet to move. Feet, we're going up there. Feet, we're going up there. Feet, let's go. Let's go. We need to take care of this. Let's take care of this today. Feet, we're not going to stay in here. We're going to take care of this. Come on, you're in, you're in charge. Come to God. Run to God. Don't run to a ship. Don't try to get through the storm. Just say, God, get me through the storm. Where, where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? I'll do it. Joseph wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. Are you doing what God wants you to do? Are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Are you witnessing? Are you tithing? Are you faithful to church? Are you committed to God's house? Well, when I can, that's not being committed. I read my Bible, not all the time. You know, be committed to that. Why should God be committed to you if you're not going to be committed to his word? Well, sometimes I can't afford to give. How can you say that? Everything God gives you, he said, just give me 10% of everything you have. So I don't have nothing. Then don't give him anything. He knows that. But don't act like you can't. Say the truth. I won't. I don't want to. God's speaking to your heart. Come on. She's going to play it through again. You need to take care of this. You need to take care of it. We need God to work in us. We need God to work in our church. We need to have the right spirit. Why are we here? We're not here for us. We're not here for our gourd. We're here for God. If you're up here and need to pray, you stay. Don't, don't rush away. I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, we give you this service. We give you what, what we've heard. We give you what we've read. We give you, uh, Lord, it all. Jonah in chapter 3 did what you told him to do. But he took it for granted. It didn't excite him. How could he not be excited about what you did in Nineveh? It just shocks me. I mean, that makes me angry. And here you are, probably angry with him, but still treating him like your child that you want to help. 
Help us, Lord, to see what you see. Help us to see it how you see it. Jonah saw himself. You said, go here. He said, this is what I'm going to do. He got in the whale and said, okay, I'll do what you want. He gets to Nineveh. He goes, okay, I'll give the message. The message does exactly and more what it was supposed to. And then he says, well, I, I don't like it. God, deal with us. Help us to be honest about what we are, who we are, and how we fail, and how we uh, just get all wound up about us. Help us to be wound up about you. Help us to be committed, devoted to you. Work in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Work in our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.